fly back with another video. Y'all see we got Eminem Sway, you know what I'm saying? The Kamikaze interview, part three. Make sure y'all go check out part one, part two, you feel me? Make sure y'all go check out that Rap Devil and what's the other song? Kill Shot. Make sure y'all go check it out. Definitely gotta get in this video. So make sure y'all hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. Let's get into it. Jesse Reyes is featured on this project. Mm -hmm. Young up and coming star. She's on two songs. How did you find Jesse Reyes? Um, I was coming home. I got home one night from a video shoot, actually. And she was on TV. It was the Seth Meyers show. Mm -hmm. And she was doing that song, Gatekeeper. And I was like, who the fuck is this? Because her voice to me was so crazy. So I rewound it. And I was like, oh, shit. I got to check her out. So I went down the wormhole of looking up shit. And I was like, yo, I really want to fuck with this chick. Because she... Right now, I'm, I, I, my personal opinion, I think she's going to really blow up. Mm -hmm. That's my personal opinion. I've seen people, very talented people, not do that. But I think that I would put my money on her that she will absolutely be huge. But I don't even know if, like, necessarily in pop world or anything like that. <laughs> I don't feel like she does pop music. I feel like she... She just she comes from a real place and she writes her own shit. First time I got in the studio with her, I played her a couple beats and she just started writing to one right there. Laid a hook. Mm -hmm. Good guy. I was like, oh shit. So she wrote She's the hook. Quick. To good guy. To yeah. good guy. Yeah. The one she's singing at the end. Yeah. There's nice guy, I mean, good, guy. good guy. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that happened is because, oddly enough, she had already had a song called Nice Guy. She had that song, right? So you know that is? I think that was the last day I was in L.A. You know I came back is? home Don't know who it is. and wrote to that one. And then I was like, I want to write to the other one, too. But they're both saying, nice guy, good guy. And I was like, fuck it. I'll make it like it's kind of one song. Uh, Dre's all over this project? Dre's um, input okay. was all over it, mm -hmm. for sure. He, he felt like me and him had couple discussions about the last album and one of the things that he said to me was like he was like he he hit me up one day he was like yo I don't like how motherfuckers are talking about your album and he had heard revival right yeah him and Jimmy Iovine had sat in there and listened to most of the songs I had done at Rick Rubin's studio and based off that reaction I, th I think Dre was a little confused too when that happened with Revival. Um, probably not more so than me, but but we had a conversation um, earlier in the year, and I think I had only had one song by that time. It, 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 this was like January. Yeah. I had the one song and was thinking about releasing it, and then another song, got, when I got back to Detroit, recorded it, like, okay, now I got two songs. I might as well do a fucking album. And that's kind of how that came about. But Dre also... <sighs> there's a couple songs that he kind of deaded them just yeah. because he didn't have a good reaction to them. And he also felt like one of them was going a little far. <laughs> <laughs> song, like, hey, what, man. what does that mean? Like, how far did it go? <laughs> it, 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 uh, it went, it definitely went too far uh, when you say go too far i feel like kamikaze was the place where if you were ever going to go so-called too far this is where it would be you did the bet verse for the rap cypher and in it you covered a lot of content that was relevant to the world we live in today that some folks want to sweep under the rug and this is my own personal opinion conversations we have every day on, on shade four five on sway in the morning we talk about, you know, the injustice, policies, prejudice. We talk about discrimination, all of these different things, whether or not we're in the middle of a race war that is trying to be perpetrated by people in power. Mm -hmm. Not a war in the sense where people are going to pick up guns and shoot at, well, maybe, shit. Right. You know? mm -hmm. But in terms of um, psychologically, the whole nine. So when you did that verse on the BET cipher, what I thought why it was necessary King Crooked had a song called I Can't Breathe, where he mm. talks about, man, we can't just be the only one saying this. White rappers shouldn't stay quiet. 
white rappers shouldn't stay quiet. I can't tell you how hard that line hit me. It was mm -hmm. to the point where I'm like, this is how strong I feel about something. I got to put it in the right words, you know? And I saw shit where it was like, oh, these are, these are not new subjects. They're new to Eminem and, you know, that kind of shit. How did you respond to that reaction? You did, you got backlash for that. You mm -hmm. know, especially when you I got backlash people. for the Trump cipher and, and yeah. you know, it is what it is. At least, at least when this shit is all said and done, maybe I can just be on the right side of history. But you got people dissecting the bars and going, oh, this shit is trash. It's not even that good. And like, that's not what it's about. You're missing the whole point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to say this also to my fan base who might have voted for him. A lot mm. of people in, in my fan base probably did. And at the time I did the cipher, I realized after it was all said and done that maybe, maybe I should have just attacked him. When you said I, I draw, you drew that line in the sand, maybe yeah. you should have not done that. You should have reworded it in showed empathy to Well, that's us. what I realized after yeah. I was done. That's kind of how I felt because it's like, okay, this is, this is like, this is backfiring on me and I don't care. I don't give a fuck if, if that's what happened and hurt my sales. I don't care about that. Yeah. I care about the message I'm trying to convey. Why you oh, felt the need okay, yeah. to stand up though? What was that for that's you as Marshall? What made you decide? Because, because I was just watching it every single day. I watch a lot of news, right? Yeah. The thing that pissed me off the most, that really set me off to when I started going crazy with the pen, because I'm like, and they and they said that though about the whole uh, the Trump situation with people, you know what I'm saying, yeah. losing losing Happen fans or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when that shit happened, and how he kept changing the narrative and kept changing the narrative, you fucking ah, oh, I, I I can't I can't um. I don't want to get into this whole Trump okay, thing we, anymore, we, we, but... Uh, well, you mentioned at the end of the ringer, Asian Orange sending a Secret Service uh, to your house. Did the Secret Service really come to your house after that? They came to my studio, yeah. Okay. Mm. And they asked, they had, they were just basically asking me questions about my lyrics to see if, what the intent was behind them. Mm -hmm. And if I was making a mm -hmm. actual threat or just expressing myself, so... So that they really happened. Wow, that's crazy. Right now, what we're seeing, said, too, because to Colin Kaepernick was named the face right. of Nike's 30th anniversary of, this of Just Do It. You saw that, right? And then you got a whole slew of people that are now burning Nike shoes and, and Nike I saw that. Products. I remember it's that. It's infuriating. Yeah, what do you think? Infuriating. Yeah. Like, really? The, the, the Nike supports people who kneel for the anthem at this fucking point. Come on, seriously, seriously, you gotta be a fucking moron to think that that's just what it's about and it's that fucking cut and dry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a meaning behind this shit and there's real pain behind this shit. And you're burning a fucking pair of shoes? When you go about your fucking day and you got your job and you're doing, thinking about all this other shit, that's what really fucking bothers you? Right. People ain't gonna stop watching football. They're just not. Yeah. Football to me is the best sport there is. And what draws you to the game should not be, if, if that's how you feel about your country and you feel like you should stand for the anthem, stand for the anthem, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But you also need to realize that this is America and people have died for these rights to be able to protest and to be able to take a knee. Stop making it fucking personal about yourself. You have nothing to do with this. I love, I love this interview right here. Yeah. I like this interview right here. I ain't gonna cap. This shit he's saying is. I agree. Uh, we got to get back to Tyler, the creator, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tyler's, you know. And um, I, I recently saw him perform. I know that Tyler was a big fan of yours growing up. Right, and then um, I recall you even reading about you saying some good things about our future, how they're pushing boundaries years ago. Yeah, for sure. And you said some great things about them, about them um, as a talent, as pushing boundaries as a group, our yeah. future as a whole. Yeah. What happened with you guys? Yeah, no, I really did like them. I, I, I thought like, 
um, I thought their movement was really cool too. Did y'all make music? We didn't make music, um, but you know, I just felt like, okay, there's a mutual respect, respect, you know? And a lot of the shit that, that ended up happening after that, like the tweet he put out with talking about Shady 15 and why can't people that are close to him tell him that his shit sucks and it's trash and like, okay, listen, man, you don't have to like it. And it could really suck. But being that somebody really was cool to you, you would expect some kind of reciprocation and just don't we, go public with it and publicly express your opinion and how much my shit is trash. Okay, so I, talk, I chalk it up to them being young and just kids, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, all right, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I was dick when I first came out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, it worked. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad about it. I'm sorry if I ever was a dick to you, but I don't oh, think I ever was. Oh, okay, yeah. Was I? Yeah, one time, man. But anyway, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. We'll talk about ah, that. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, nah, man, so I liked him. And, and then Earl Sweatshirt gets in an interview after, after Tyler trashes me. And then Earl Sweatshirt, anybody who listens to Eminem's drinking too much Mountain Dew. And, and I'm just like, really? And he said that after that was song, he said <laughs> you know what I'm about saying? Like, You guys were just on tour with the us. We hung was... out, like we we kicked it, made jokes, like you know what I'm saying? Like so the last straw, like look, I know a lot of this shit. I could I I could come across being very petty. Yeah. But at a certain point in time. Alright, I'm deleting this app. Someone has their breaking point. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm Tyler tweeted out the thing about Walk on Water, this fucking song is horrible. I was like, all right, I need to say something now because this is fucking stupid, mm -hmm. you know? But at the same time, I'm not gonna let everybody just keep fucking, I'm not gonna be America's punching bag and motherfuckers mm. just wanna think it's cool and safe to say whatever the fuck they want about me. I think it shocks people M, because for all your career, you was the I just don't give a fuck guy. That can work both ways. How so? Because you don't give a fuck, you will fire back at somebody who says something about you. I picked and chose who to, that I wanted to say my piece with. Yeah. Because a lot of those things were personal. But then there's a lot of things that aren't personal in Kamikaze. You know, it's just the game and competition. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And spirit of an MC. Spirit of an MC, yeah. But um, you know, with the Tyler the Creator thing, man, I I I, I realize now, and I I realize when I when I when I said it, but I, I I wasn't like in the mind frame of I was angry when I said the shit about Tyler. The fact of like. Every time I saw this kid, like, always oh, so cool to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I loved his energy. Like everything. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he was a funny dude. Like he's super charismatic and shit. But I'm, but I'm sitting back, hey. like, man, at what point? At what point do I have to say something just to defend myself? And I think that the word that I called him on the album was on that song was one of the things where I felt like I cannot think of the song I reacted to it though. Because in my in my the homophobic in my slur. quest yeah, yeah, yeah in my quest to hurt him uh -huh. I realized that I was hurting a lot of other people by saying it. And at the time I was so mad it was just whatever more, in the midst of everything yeah, else exactly. that was going on on this album and the things that it took to pull this album together and all that kind of shit. It was one of the things that I kept going back to going, I don't feel right with this. Before the album came out, I had the conversation with Paul and we spun the word back. But now I realize people can hear what I'm saying anyways. In the case of this, man, I, I feel like just, <clears throat> man, I wish you and Tyler could sit down and uh, yeah, I want you yeah. hash that one out. Now that you fired your shot back and he said what he said, because I think that's a special young man and and he could probably use your mentorship and, and you could probably feed off of, of what he has to offer as well. I could tell it's different from 
Joe or some of the other. Yeah, other it's definitely different. Did. It's not. It's not. It, it's it's not as personal. It's one of them things like, all right, dude, you mm-hmm. you 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 deserve a tap now because a tap. I think That's you thought you it was it cool tap. to just yeah. because you slid with the other things, mm-hmm. and I didn't say shit because, like I said, I was chalking it up to them being young and just kids, man. I'm like, but at the same time, at what point do I just got to keep taking this shit? I don't even want to see what's coming up, part four, you feel me? Y'all just stay tuned for part four. Y'all already know what's coming. Make sure y'all subscribe and hit the like button. We have. You can't see nothing yet. I wanted to see it. Can't see nothing, nothing yet. Too can't see nothing yet. Y'all already know, man. I'm definitely love these. I can sit here and watch this all day. I know. I was there. Yeah, facts, facts, facts. And what he's saying, like, I, I feel like he, he writing a lot of cases on what he's doing. And he's saying his, his, he's saying his wrongs. He's saying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's not. And, and that's what I like about it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I like about it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Make sure y'all stay tuned. We got hella more Eminem dropping after this, so make sure y'all stay tuned for it. But uh, catch y'all next one.